My name is Chad Holtzinger. I work at Shopworks Architecture. Over the last four or five years, we've really been researching and trying to figure out what it is to design uh, in a trauma-informed way, which to us really means um, how do we engage the built environment with an idea of a quality of life? Um, the intersection of the built environment can enhance that or not. Architects are really good at the lower to physiological needs, safety needs on Maslow's hierarchy, but how does the built environment transcend that and, and really engender places that create love and belonging, esteem, self-actualization, particularly for individuals who have experienced chronic trauma or are vulnerable. So our intuition says environments that have mixed use, um, a variety of scale, community connection, maybe have an iconic uh, community relationship in terms of a presence in, this, in a neighborhood, in gentrifying neighborhoods especially. Um, having that cultural connectivity and continuity is really important. We also are thinking about families. What is the continuity of families in our communities and how, is this, how are cities evolving, for better or for worse, with respect to what we're doing with families, intergenerational connections. We've also spent a lot of time working on incorporating art into uh, our work. We know that art is a nonverbal communication technique, and it is a way to de-stress. Um, exposure to art and exposure to imagery that is relatable makes connection. This is a building that's on I-25 and I-70 that's under construction right now called Elizabetta. And the design idea of this is to, to create a cultural icon, a neighborhood icon, something that's visual from the interstate at 55 miles an hour that's expressive of the ideas of a community. But it's also, being in a tough environment, important to create a respite and place for children to be safe. And for, there's, Laredin runs a school for intellectual disabilities. Um, connecting vulnerable people into our architecture, into our cities. Children, experience can change the mature brain, but experience during the critical periods of early childhood organizes the brain systems. When I heard this, it blew my mind, because we're screwing up cities systematically. What needs to be contemplated as designers of the built environment is how do we make places safe for children? So we're working on this building, which is an amazing movie theater built in the 1980s. The concept is to restore the, the urbanism of this into something that is hopeful. It connects biophilia, streetscape. There's bus rapid transit. This is in Fort Collins. It's near bus rapid transit. So restoring the built environment in ways that are productive and create safety for pedestrians and children and people who walk the earth. Inside the building, we're trying to focus on interior environments that in, uh, engender interpersonal relationship, that connection. Um, the built environment and inventory of housing, while there is a housing crisis, there's good ways and bad ways of housing. And connection, I think, is really important. We also think there's, a, there's an idea about historical and symbolic meaning. This is a quilt. And we did the Dolores Project shelter recently in a project called Arroyo Village. And the history of the quilt with a, a Dolores Project is they gave a guest a quilt every time they entered the shelter. Well, we decided. What would be a better way to make architecture than to express that idea into a building? Um, it has a cultural richness. There's a narrative to it that's steeped in the operation of the place. And I think there's also an identity and a hope and a joy to the architectural expression. So we're trying to interlock these ideas into how we engage the built environment. The connection with the outdoors, we believe, is also really important. This is the lobby of the Dolores Project. This is the first thing a guest sees on the way in. And dismantling the institution of shelter was a big idea. 
We wanted guests to really walk in and feel like I've got a home. It's a safe place. There's connection to the outdoors. This is Phyllis, a woman who, uh, this is her first experience in the dorm itself, and it was just pure joy. Six and a half minutes. <laughs> Brandon Courtyard is a project under construction um, on Colfax right now, and uh, Volunteers of America, uh, their idea of buildings through their lexicon is permanence and dignity. Housing should have that for all, um, as well as having places for people to interact and, and foster that sense of community, that sense of place. Um, connection to indoors and outdoors is really important, I think, and, and to the extent that we can have south-facing anything, I always grasp at it. Um, people love the daylight. Sometimes we hear they love their blackout shades, too. This is a project we're working on right now in Grand Junction. It's for a group called Karis. They work with homeless children and youth. And this is an apartment building, and we're, we're really trying to figure out what it is to inspire and cultivate a sense of joy, curiosity, um, dignity, and to inspire a, a relationship with young persons' lives that trajects them in a way that might not be available otherwise. The built environment can do that. So in conclusion, I'm going to throw a bunch of words out in my last 10 seconds. Trauma-informed design is really designing for children, mental health, enhanced safety, joy, dignity, symbolic meaning, hope, grounding, peace of mind, and connections. Thank you.